I've been talking about race and ethnicity and, and racial and ethnic relations. And I've mentioned how race is not a biological concept, but a social concept. It's something that is socially constructed. So how does this social construction actually take place? In order to consider that, we have to think of social, historical, and cultural uh, context. So let's start with the historical, because it has to do with time. And uh, the question then for the historical context is, when did the contact between two or more groups take place? And what, what was happening then and what is happening, what has been happening since then over time? That's the historical context, which again is very important because we mustn't think that nothing has changed, that plus ça change, plus c'est la même chose. No, it, people change, uh, social relations, relations change, uh, environments change. So we have to take that into account when we try to uh, understand racial and ethnic relations. The social context has to do with who were the groups that got in contact with each other and also the, the organization or the structure, if you wanna use a sociological term, of their societies. Because if we, we tend to behave according to the structure of the society in which we live. So people who live in, um, uh, a kingdom, for example, will have uh, a different or may have a different conception of social relations than uh, somebody who or people who live in, uh, in a democracy that assumes that people are more egalitarian than uh, a situation of a kingdom assumes. Okay. So that also um, should be in the, the equation. And uh, the cultural context. Cultures have to do with values and norms and, and, uh, um, and how we behave based on those values and norms. So the values are uh, you know, what we consider ideal. So they are um, uh, concepts. And the norms are rules of behavior. So I'm going to act a certain way because I think this is the right way to act. Um, so again, people from different, from different cultures have different values uh, and different norms. And we rely on them in order to behave, in order to think of ourselves, and in order to think of uh, the people that we get in contact with. Because we human beings, Whenever we, we encounter a, a new situation, we need to, to find a place for that situation in our brain. You know, for our brain needs some sort of box, if you will, uh, in which to put that information so that it can make sense of it. With time, we take it for granted. And, uh, and we don't, of course, when we, uh, act on a day-to-day -day basis, we're not constantly, okay, where do I put this information? Which box does this go into? Where does this person go? No, because that's part of socialization. We learn in society how to read uh, what we encounter, how to classify uh, our relationships. But at first, you know, there's that hesitation. Okay, how, how do I see that? So, and we tend to go according to our values. But uh, we can also ask what kind of ethos does each society have? In other words, what kind of worldview do the people from uh, each society who got in contact with each other have? And um, a movie from the 1980s comes to mind. It was uh, called The Gods Must Be Crazy. And, you know, it's a comedy and it's about this group of, uh, hunters and gatherers in the desert and uh, a bottle, an empty bottle of Coca-Cola falls from a plane. And uh, so that's the premise of the movie. It's like, well, what is this, what is this object 
that came from the sky. What is this? They didn't know what a bottle was. They didn't know what Coke was, Coca-Cola. And uh, so, oh, is this a message from the gods? The gods must be crazy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, but this to, to illustrate the idea that we, uh, each society will have a, a worldview, a way of understanding life, understanding the world. And if they don't match, then there can be conflict.